Welcome to the Pleistocene era, 30,000 years ago, the Ice Age. These computer-generated woolly mammoths are about all that's left of the great herds that once roamed the planet. But a new book called Mammoth details the life of one of these extraordinary creatures from the point of view of its fossilized remains. What emerges is a story of the deeply troubling hubris of mankind. Chris, what prompted you to write Mammoth? I guess the most fun thing that prompted me was the 2007 Natural History Auction in New York where the mammoth um, tusk was on sale alongside the skull of a Tyrannosaurus and a prehistoric penguin and the hand of an Egyptian mummy and they were fought over by museums and celebrities so Nicolas Cage and Leonardo DiCaprio got into a bidding war over the Tyrannosaurus skull. Initially I thought it was funny and then I started to see it as a little bit sad that they were using these creatures as um, symbols of power to show how macho they were. Ironically, the book is kind of about us, even though it's the animals that are telling the story. They're observing us through the ages. According to the book, the swinging appendage competition over fossils didn't start with Messrs. DiCaprio and Cage, but way back in 1801 between the American president Thomas Jefferson and the nation of France who claimed the USA was a weak and degenerate country, populated by lesser animals. Infuriated by the snub, Jefferson set out to find proof of the great mammoth, enlisting the help of portrait painter and amateur naturalist Charles Wilson Peel. When um, Jefferson was seeking mammoth bones, there were some discovered um, at a farm um, just outside New York, and uh, Peel was the one who went out to the dig and bought them and managed to get all the bones out of the ground and put them on display in his natural history museum in philadelphia he promoted it as this huge leviathan that had once walked the american plains and then he ended up sending them off to europe on tour so that they could shake them in front of the french and say look we we actually are a big powerful nation Is there still speculation about how the mammoths became extinct? There's a couple of extinction theories um, regarding it. The one that I run with in the book is the idea of ancestors of Native Americans in North America, um, the Clovis. Once they arrived, they were much more advanced than the Neanderthals and they used weapons and tools. They were much more clever hunters and there was a, tens of millions of mammoth and other creatures, bison roaming the plains and seemingly hunted them to extinction and that's when the climate started to change um, because the mammoth were keeping everything cold. Others would say that the climates change separately and that was a primary reason for the extinction of the mammoth. But extinction theories is a is an interesting subject to get into because the scientific community is still super divided as to what might have happened. With climate change melting the permafrost now in the Arctic, mammoth tusk hunting has become a lucrative pursuit in the illegal trafficking of ivory. But from these digs has come an unusual fascination within the scientific community. So there are several teams around the world currently working on bringing the mammoth back. They found an entire mammoth carcass in the, in the Siberian permafrost, and when they dug it out, it stank and it was bleeding, so they were able to collect blood and uh, have viable DNA. I mean, it sounds nefarious, but the idea is to recreate a herd and then release that herd in Siberia, where they will help to restore the melting permafrost by cooling everything down again, because they used to just walk in their millions around the north of the world and stomped down the, the earth and the snow, kept everything cold and dry. And they're not going to reverse climate change, but if they can arrest the warming process a little bit, then it might buy us some time to get our act together and wean ourselves off fossil fuels. It will be pretty moving to see mammoth again, although I'm kind of in two minds about it now because I know we won't stop there. We will go too far because we always do. And the Jurassic Park fantasy doesn't have a happy ending for humans. But make no mistake, the dead will walk the earth. <laughs>